Selective incorporation is a constitutional doctrine that ensures states cannot enact laws that infringe on the rights and freedoms guaranteed by the Bill of Rights. This process involves the application of certain provisions of the first ten amendments to the U.S. Constitution to the states through the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection and Due Process Clauses. Importance Balances power between state governments and federal authority. Protects individual rights from state infringement. Historical Context Originally, the Bill of Rights only restricted the federal government. Post-Civil War Amendments, 13th, 14th, 15th, expanded federal oversight of state actions. The 14th Amendment Key Clauses Due Process Clause Prohibit states from depriving any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Equal Protection Clause requires states to provide equal protection under the law to all people within their jurisdictions. Significance Serves as the basis for incorporating federal rights to the state level. The Doctrine of Selective Incorporation Selective incorporation is the judicial process through which the Supreme Court has applied portions of the Bill of Rights. To the states using the 14th Amendment. Total incorporation versus selective incorporation. 1. Total incorporation. The idea that all Bill of Rights protections should apply to the states. 2. Selective incorporation. The idea that only fundamental rights should be applied to the states on a case-by-case -case basis. Key Supreme Court cases. Early cases. 1. Baron v. Baltimore, 1833, ruled that the Bill of Rights did not apply to state governments. 2. Slaughterhouse Cases, 1873. Narrow interpretation of the 14th Amendment, initially limiting its scope. Landmark Incorporation Cases. 1. Jitlow v. New York, 1925. Incorporated the First Amendment's freedom of speech. 2. Near v. Minnesota, 1931. Incorporated the First Amendment's freedom of the press. 3. Map v. Ohio. 1961 incorporated the Fourth Amendment's protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. 4. Gideon v. Wainwright, 1963 incorporated the Sixth Amendment's right to counsel. 5. Miranda v. Arizona, 1966 incorporated the Fifth Amendment's protection against self incrimination. 6. McDonald v. Chicago, 2010 incorporated the Second Amendment's right to keep and bear arms. Mechanism of Incorporation e. Criteria for Incorporation Fundamental to the American scheme of justice Deeply rooted in the nation's history and tradition Essential to a fair and just legal system Process The Supreme Court evaluates whether specific protections in the Bill of Rights should apply to the states. Analysis often involves historical context, legal precedent, and the importance of the right in question. Current state of selective incorporation Fully incorporated rights Most of the Bill of Rights has been incorporated including fundamental freedoms such as speech, religion, and assembly, not fully incorporated. Certain rights, such as the Third Amendment's protection against quartering troops and the Seventh Amendment's right to a jury trial in civil cases, have not been fully incorporated. Positive impacts ensures a uniform standard of individual rights across all states, provides a legal framework for challenging state laws, that infringe on constitutional rights. Some argue it diminishes state sovereignty, concerns about judicial activism and the Supreme Court's role in defining fundamental rights. Selective incorporation has played a critical role in shaping the relationship between the federal government and the states, ensuring that individual rights are protected across the country. By understanding its origins, mechanisms, and impact, we can better appreciate the balance between state authority and the protection of fundamental freedoms. Selective incorporation uses the 14th Amendment to apply Bill of Rights protections to the states. The Supreme Court evaluates which rights are fundamental and essential for justice. This doctrine ensures consistent protection of individual rights nationwide while maintaining a balance between state and federal powers.